Hey everybody, Jefferson Graham here. We are live and we're going to be talking about iPhone photography. I'm going to click a button here and we're going to bring on Rick Salmon, the one and only from New York, the one of the great photographers, one of the great iPhone photographers as well. Both of us are speaking at the upcoming Kelby One uh, iPhone photography conference. Rick, welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's great seeing you. You know, I've been dying to play guitar live with you. You know, but it's going to happen someday, I hope. We could try it, but it'll be a little delay, right? I know, but you are, for, for your listeners and your viewers, I just got to say this, Jefferson is amazing. He plays stuff that I, uh, I'll i never be able to play. They, when you did Here Comes the Sun with the finger picking, you're amazing. Well, thank you. And of course, Rick is also good on the bass and on the piano, so he's very, <laughs> very well versed, right? I try. You try. Uh, tell it. Let's tell, tell everybody about the conference. Why don't we'll put it into your words and tell them about the conference and what you'll be teaching? Well, I would say be there or be square, <laughs> like like we used to say. <clears throat> excuse me, like we used to say in the 60s. You know, I'm teaching uh, two classes. One is called um, the iPhone mindset. And it's basically about how you could wrap your mind around the, the power that's in the iPhone and, and in the app. Susan Salmon is actually doing a, a whole class on apps. And the other one I'm doing is idea to image. So you have an idea. How do you go, go from the idea that's in your head into the uh, final image? And, you know, the, the lineup that they have you. I know you're an expert iPhone uh, uh, photographer and videographer. I love your photo walk series. Uh, you have Scott Kelby, Eric Kuna, uh, so many people, Russell Brown, Terry White. I mean, it, if you want to learn about iPhone photography, and you can watch this for a year, it's live. But I think the really cool thing is you could watch and rewatch for a year. Yeah, and it's uh, it's two days, and uh, yeah. other other people. I'm not sure if you mentioned uh, Lisa Carney is going to be there. Yep. Is it Terry Sweeney? Terry Sweeney. Uh, yeah. Terry White is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so many different people. Uh, Glenn Lewis and uh, oh, he's amazing, right? Yeah. So many people from different walks. Uh, so lot to learn. I'm going to be talking about the beginner's guide to iPhone camera. So if you're, there are nice. so many, so many hidden <clears throat> menu things in there that most people have no idea about because Apple doesn't tell you. There is no well, instruction manual, right? Well, what do you think is the coolest hidden feature? If I could put you on the spot. Yeah, well, one the, of the, the, one, the, cool, the, the coolest must have hidden yeah. feature is the leveler, which gives you the clue of whether yeah. your horizons are gonna be off or, off or not. This is new right. in iOS 17, just got introduced yeah. this year. And is is uh, everybody should have it. It shouldn't be yeah. hidden, right, Rick? Yeah, I think that's a cool feature. One of the cool features, and it is cool, like you say, there's no instruction manual, is when, you, when you're taking a, a, a photo, you can hold down the uh, the white button and you swipe it to the left and you get the burst mode and you swipe it swipe it the other way and you get the video. So you don't have to go into the menu and change, right? Yeah, that one like and then cool. th the, the other one is that you could take photos and video at the same time. Once you start video recording, there's a shutter button and you could be I clicking know. on it and uh, not have to swipe in and out to different apps. Yeah, well, I know you have a ton of hidden features, so I'm looking. Actually, I just put something on <clears throat> on social media today. I'm going to watch all the classes because there's so much to learn from these pros. Yeah, the other class I'm doing is on special effects. Uh, uh, ah. That that uh, the uh, slow motion, time lapse, live photos, all the really cool things that are you know exclusive to smartphone but a live photo is exclusive to the iphone and you could do a lot of great things uh in live as in make people disappear make cars yep. streak and of course do long exposures on water that uh comparable on a big camera to a 10 second exposure i know you don't need a tripod neutral density filter remote control anymore right so anyway there are so many hidden features i can't wait to see uh see your class so thanks for giving us a sneak peek uh, and uh, that's what we're doing. That's just two guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, Eric and Scott and Terry, they've got, uh, and uh, Frederick, uh, Van Johnson, they've all got some really great things to tell you all about. Yeah. Uh, today, let's talk about travel photography. Uh, uh, sure. Rick has come back from Cuba. He's been yep. to Morocco. He's been at the bottom of the world. He has yep. been all over the place. Tell everybody about shooting on just an iPhone. This is new for you. You used to run around <coughs> with a big camera, and now you're running around with an iPhone. 
So let's well, start with Cuba. <laughs> Cuba was uh, was amazing. We, Susan and I had been there uh, two times before. Well, once in 2001 and once in 2009. And I got some nice pictures, but you know, I was new to Cuba and everyone who goes there, they're enthralled with the cars, right? The old cars. We had a 1954 uh, Chevy for the whole week. So we're photographing all the old cars and uh, you know, the, the falling down buildings. And by the way, here's a fact, three buildings a day collapse in old Havana. I mean, this place is not uh, uh, in good shape in some areas, but there are other areas that, that are doing fine. But anyway, I, I, I had pictures before, but I was so inspired to go there with the iPhone for a lot of reasons. First of all, you don't look like, you don't look like a pro. Right, so I, I walk up to people, and it, you, you're not, you, it's less intimidating, right? You could just go and take the shot. They, they think you're uh, just a tourist. And by the way, I pay people to take their their pictures. I don't pay children, but I, I pay adults because I feel if I'm getting something out of it, they should get something out of it. But here's, I think, the biggest thing. I don't know if it's the biggest thing. It might be the biggest thing with the iPhone. With the, with the iPhone or smartphone, you know, I have the S23 like you do also, you're not removed from the scene. When you're photographing with the mirrorless camera or digital SLR, you're like basically hiding behind the camera. You're looking through the camera. You're distracted by the histogram, which you should pay attention to, you know, if you're shooting with uh, that type of camera. Um, you have, you're distracted by the numbers. You have to think about the focus, the f-stop, the shutter speed, all, all this different stuff. With the iPhone, you have to think about one thing, composition. Well, you could also think about the mood because the mood is the most important thing of this, uh, in, in a picture. But if you could just think about composition, if you're not removed from the scene, you know, I think you'll get a higher percentage of good pictures because you're, you're not removed. You're more in touch with the scene. And that's really what I think a photograph is, you know, being, being in touch, that connection. A connection is like so important. So I think I got, well, actually, I know, I got a higher percentage of keepers with the iPhone than I did with my big cameras in 2001 and 2009, for sure. How many images do you figure you snapped in Cuba? I don't take a lot of pictures. People are surprised. I have what I call, Jefferson, my one picture promise. And the one picture promise is this, that if you're in a situation, if you could, if you tell yourself, if I could only take one picture, what would that one picture be? I promise you that you'll get a higher percentage of keepers. So I, I don't, I don't shoot a lot. I don't shoot a lot. So I think about, okay, what's, I'm going to follow my one picture promise. So, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, the, what's the best composition. So to answer your question, you know, how many pictures did I take? You know, I don't know, a, a few hundred. I, I did do a lot of videos, and that's another thing with the iPhone. The iPhone is just uh, amazing, amazing for videos. It is, and I think I take more pictures than you do, but um, <laughs> that's not a brag. That's because uh, your pictures are amazing. I just uh, like insurance, so I like to get <laughs> lots and lots of photos. But speaking of photos, Rick, Yes. Let's take a look at some of your pictures. Uh, let's begin with, sure. there's you and your lovely bride. Uh, that's Susan, and there you are at the airport in your new yeah. car. In our, in our 1954 Ford, which had the, the guy, the driver, uh, Raul, replaced the engine. There's a diesel engine in it, and it replaced the transmission and the engine. Most of the cars there, all cars have Toyota engines in them. Uh, and Toyota transmission, so that the bodies are are in really good shape. This this needs a little paint job, but this is the car that we had for a week. And if if someone goes there, I would recommend you know hiring a car and a driver and a guide for a week. Uh, if you're going to go to Trinidad, also um, Trinidad is about five hours away. There are a lot of great things to see to see on the way. But having the old car, you're like in a movie. And I think that's another reason why I got a, a high a high percentage of pictures, Jefferson, because I felt like I was in a movie. You have the old cars against the old backgrounds. That's taken at the Havana Airport uh, when we left. It was really easy to get there. It's like you know an hour flight from Miami, and uh, it, it was just so much fun. You know, I look at this car and I get get a little choked up because it it, it was one of the most amazing trips I've been on for sure. What does it cost to hire a driver to take you around for a week? Well, I have a T-shirt that says it depends. So it depends. It depends on on what you want to do. Uh, it could be a few hundred dollars a day. Okay, but definitely yep. worth it. 
Well, if you want to get around uh, and, uh, you know, they call me the shoot and scoot photographer. So I like to go someplace. I like to shoot fast and uh, <laughs> and get out. So anyway, okay. this is in Antarctica. And, uh, actually, it's in South Georgia. It was on my trip to uh, Antarctica. South Georgia Island, home to millions of uh, king penguins. Uh, if you're going to go to Antarctica, you might as well uh, go to South Georgia and the Falkland Islands. Anyway, there's a, a rule in Antarctica that you can't get closer than 15 feet to the animals. You can't approach them. However, the animals don't know the rule. <laughs> so this guy, this penguin walked right up to me. And another great thing about the iPhone, as you know, is because of the small sensor and because of the, uh, the wide angle lens, everything in the scene is in focus. So almost well, yeah. the, 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 pe the penguin is, is sharper than the background. Uh, and I, I did touch the, I also adjusted the exposure there. I tapped the screen and I moved it, it down a little. But you, you can, you know, after the fact, as you know, you know, blur the background of Photoshop Lightroom and there's, there's a Photoshop Express lets you do that, uh, lets you do that also. But I got down low here. This is one of, is this guy's like saying, welcome to South Georgia Island. And if I would, is messing around with the mirrorless camera or an SLR. I would have hold it down at the flip out screen. Here, I'm holding my camera actually upside down, right? I'm holding it upside down to get low. And this is, I, I do this for a lot of my uh, seascape photography too. Uh, my tip is if there's not a foreground element, you, you use the ground as a foreground element. But look, the, the dynamic range, right? You know this. Yeah, look yeah. at the, the dynamic range from the white to the black to the shadows. To get a shot like that with uh, with a mirrorless camera, you'd have to spend uh, some time, right? <laughs> well, I would have taken several hundred of, of these penguins. I would have been well, so I took, enthralled. I, I, I took a few. Uh, well, uh, it is it, enthralled is a good word, but they, they, there's millions of penguins and they eat fish, and it doesn't smell that great. That anyone who's been to uh, South Georgia Island knows it does not smell that great. Oh, okay. Let's go yeah. to another photo. That that's one of your beautiful cars in Cuba. Shot that is our car. E yeah, shot in the evening, shot in night mode. What did you do here? I, I didn't shoot in the night mode. We just this is our our hotel is right to the uh, right there. It's not a hotel. We stayed in someone's house, and that's the uh, the Palador. Uh, that's what I would recommend if someone goes there to stay in someone's house. And you could book this in advance, book through a travel agent. But look at the condition of this car. Here I'm shooting with the with the wide angle lens because I wanted everything in the scene in focus. But again, the dynamic range. And we're just checking into into the house. And I just lifted up my phone. I said, hey, look at the light. Go shoot. And, and you're out of there. You also see it's cropped. I'm big on um, cropping. I have, uh, as you know, I think we talked about on your show before, OCD, obsessive cropping disorder. So, you know, there's a saying in photography, if it doesn't add, take it out. So there was stuff around it that I didn't really think added to uh, this picture. So uh, I took it out. Okay, we're getting some questions here. So I'm going to go back to the two shot of us. And Todd has a question for us. Yep. Uh, trying not to keep a low profile when shooting with an iPhone. What did the two of you think of adding lenses such as the Reflex G series to your kit? And I'm going to defer to Rick because I know he's tried them and I haven't. Well, I, I have it over in my in my cabinet uh, over there. Yeah, I don't have it here, but it's it's about like that. You know, it's like this: the fisheye lens, like this, and the portrait lens. I'm trying to the portrait lens sticks out. You know, maybe an inch, so it doesn't make you look uh, any more like uh, pro. My guess is most people most people don't notice don't notice that you're uh, that that you have the add-on lens. But I think keeping a low profile and not looking like a pro. <laughs> And it just it makes the person feel good. Also makes me feel good. I don't want to be intimidating, right? You know the expression that the camera looks both ways. And picturing the subject, you're also picturing a part of yourself. Well, uh, that if the more relaxed I am, the more relaxed the subject's going to be. But how did you like the experience of using a lens? Because for me. I, it always was just one more thing that I had to bring. And the beauty of the iPhone is it's in my pocket and I just yank it out and I'm ready for action. I don't have to connect anything on top of it. So what's your take? I use it when I have to. Like I have some pictures. I don't know if we're going to show them. I have some fisheye pictures. There's a picture of uh, of a theater on my website and there's a picture of uh, of an old car. So the fisheye lens, you can't do a fisheye with this. So, you know, you have to do it. And the telephoto lens, if I, if I want to work a little closer, uh, a little further, sorry, a little further from the subject, 
I'll just screw that on. But I travel with the vest with the with the has like eleven pockets, a Scots vest, and so I could just uh, take this out. The reflex to use the lenses, you have to use a special case. I just screw it on, just screw it off. It's very very easy. But I'm with you, Jefferson. The last thing, the last thing I want, I saw. Actually, I only saw one person in Cuba with the week in the week with the big camera. The last thing I want is one of those grips. You know, you see these. Yeah. And people, will, that's the last thing I want. <laughs> I don't want that. Yeah, I did an early article uh, about how to uh, put a Canon seventy to two hundred millimeter lens onto your iPhone, and I did the whole thing and I set it up, and now it's massive. It was massive. Yeah. Like, what's the point? You know. I know. Yeah, we have I know, a comment. I know. Yeah, we have a comment from Cynthia. I'm learning to use the exposure competition on my phone. Good. I found yeah. the videos taken on my iPhone are great for social media. Thank you for presenting this summit. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, Cynthia, uh, thanks. Uh, and we're going to go back to some more of Rick's amazing photos. A little motion blur in Cuba. And in Photoshop. I yeah. got out early one morning, and uh, this is a picture I want. You know, I have, a, I, I think, setting a goal. Well, setting a goal in our life is really important and <laughs> setting a goal in the photography. So I wanted to get a blur and I figured I could do it better in Photoshop because I just want to enjoy walking around. So what I did is I, I took the shot. I selected the subject in uh, the car in Photoshop and the subject, the object selection, as you know, Jefferson, is just amazing. It, it's so sharp. You can control how much around the subject is, uh, is, is, is selected. So anyway, I selected, I did an inverse, then I went to filters, motion blur, and then I, I thought this blur would look good. And it looks, it looks pretty realistic. And uh, <laughs> I didn't have to, you know, try like a hundred times because as you know, getting a pan, it's not that you, you'd be pretty lucky to get the effect you want the first time. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce this name. Sinu, I think. I lean more towards not adding a lens to the iPhone. I feel like it takes mm -hmm. away from the readiness of a quick shot at the point mm -hmm. when, at the point where I carry and add a lens for the iPhone, I'll switch to a camera. I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah, except except that if you, <laughs> the, the two of my favorite pictures from <laughs> Cuba are taken with the fisheye lens, with the reflex fisheye lens. And I just wouldn't have been able to get them without it. And, you know, I would say it takes... 15 seconds to screw it on, 15 seconds to screw it off. Okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, I'm interested in a nice animal, animal, anamorphic lens for video. Yeah. And uh, I haven't found the perfect one yet, but I'd sure like to try that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to some pictures and we'll take the comment down. Uh, another one of your amazing shots in Morocco. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, we were, <laughs> this is our first day, our first day in Morocco. I would have missed this shot had I been having a, had a big camera, uh, I think, and, uh, and a backpack. We see these guys, we're, we're driving along the side of the road. We see this as a camel, uh, all these people enjoying the late afternoon, the sunset camel ride in the sky, like leading the camels. I jump out of the car. I take my shoes off. I'm running through the sand dunes as fast as I possibly can. So I'm 72 years old at the point. I'm 73 now, running through, and I see that, and I'm getting down low because I wanted separation. If I had shot at eye level, the, the camel's heads and the rider's heads would have been like, sounds funny, they might have been like decapitated by the sand dune in the back. So I'm shooting down low, and because I'm shooting on the uh, high efficiency files with a dynamic range, it's like HDR. Look at look at the picture that I was able to get running, basically, you know, on the fly, on the run. Because as I said before, what was I thinking about? Composition. What was I thinking about? The mood, the feeling. So someone just said before. Sorry, I forget the name that they're learning how to control the learning how to control the the exposure. So I have my phone up, and as I, as I'm shooting, I tap, and I'm just going. I'm, I'm you know putting that little sun you know down 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 down, so the highlights were not overexposed and blown out, and and I was able to to get the shot. And Morocco was the first time where I went anywhere with only my iPhone uh, in Antarctica and Tanzania and Cuba. I took the S23 for the 10X lens. The only time I use the uh, the S23 is for the uh, 10X lens. 
Yeah. Um, I was walking on the beach one morning and I took a look to the side and I saw that there was a double rainbow uh, going over the Manhattan Beach Pier. And I had an iPhone in my pocket. I didn't have it. My Sony was at home. It was you know, another those classic <laughs> situations. There it was. And I did great. And, I, you know, I did the same thing that you did. I ran. I ran because yeah. I wanted yeah. to get the a lifeguard tower as my foreground. And I wanted to get there before the rainbow was gone. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think I saw that shot. Yeah, it's made the rounds. Vinny, I carry a small Fuji X70 for when I feel I need a real camera. 95% of the time, I shoot on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And Todd says, do either of you use an app other than the iPhone native app to shoot? So this is like one of the most common questions that I get. Yeah. Your pictures are amazing. What app is it that you're using? And I say, well, you know, there's this really great app that's on the <laughs> front page of, the, of my ma main home screen, and it's called Camera. And that's the one I use. What about you, that, Rick? Well, I have, first of all, I have uh, 369, 12, I have 24, I have 25 apps. And I have all my apps in a folder on my home screen, which is what uh, Susan Salmon told me to do. Oh, you can't see. But anyway, I like to use a Snapseed. I think Snapseed is amazing. You can control the exposure. You could put type in there. You could do a vignette. You could do a vin vin vignette blur. Uh, for black and white, do you use dramatic black and white? Well, first of all, Todd is asking about shooting, not editing, right? Oh, shooting. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Uh, the only app, other app I use is the Reflex app. I know, light, uh, I know a lot of people use the Lightroom app, which I have here on my phone. But the Reflex app gives you – actually, I, I took a screenshot. I don't know if you can see it. But all the different control, all the different controls there. But someone says, "Oh, I, I don't want to use an iPhone. I want all the camera controls." Well, here I can control the ISO, the shutter speed, the exposure value, the focus, the white balance. I have the grid. I can change the focus. I can change the lenses. I could uh, fine tune the image. I have so many controls here. And they say, "Oh, I want a camera with the with the zoom lens." I say, "Zoom with your feet." Remember that right, expression? Right. <laughs> yes, I still so, use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So those are the two apps I use, the camera one and Reflex. Okay, so I use the camera for 95% of the time. For long exposures, I would use even longer or reheld. And the, I, use, I, right? I use those two. I, I, for my main camera, I use that one. But for long exposures, reheld, and which people don't believe it. I was at the New Croton Dam. A guy has a tripod, the ND filter. And I took it. You could take up to a 30-second exposure, as you know, with reheld. And then... A, uh, handheld, handheld up to a 30 second exposure. I've been able to get a really sharp shot at 20. And even longer, I did, you know, put it on a tripod, you could do a 24 hour exposure. Oh, I've never done that. From Sheila. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> neither have I. From Sheila. Rick, I've heard you say that you're taking your Sony mirrorless when you're going to do images of eagles catching fish. No yes. telephoto iPhone? Well, uh, I am going to bring the S23 there because it has a 10x lens. And sometimes the eagles come close. But sometimes the eagles are like, you know, 20 or 30, 40 yards away or they're flying in the sky. Uh, so it's going to the, the Sony with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens is going to get me closer. Plus, at 30 frames per second, I'm going to get a higher, uh, uh, I'm going to have a, a better chance of getting exactly the shot 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 I want because in bird photography and all animal photography, gesture is the key, right? Like wings up or wings down is like one basic tip, but just a little change in the wings or the expression on the eagle's uh, face is going to change everything. So for long sh action shots like that, I'm definitely going to take the Sony, uh, a Sony A1s and the 200, 600, 200 to 600 millimeter lens, which is super sharp. Okay, so I do uh, so much iPhone photography, but I also shoot on my Sony a7 IV, my 7200mm yeah. lens, my 24 to 70. When I do corporate work, I, I tend to show up with the, with the Sony because if I just showed up with an iPhone, they would scoff at me, though I just did a corporate shoot where it was, it was classic, okay? So I was going into um, businesses, and I was taking the exterior of the business, and then I, I needed to get some interior shots, and I would walk in, they'd say, no cameras, no yep. cameras. 
No cameras. Yep. And then I said, fine, fine. I'll just leave the camera in the car. Just walk in with the iPhone. Nobody said a word to me. Yeah. So. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, well, a wedding photographer could probably get as good pictures or better with the iPhone than with the big camera, but a bride's not going to pay thousands of dollars for a wedding shoot. If someone yeah, shows the only up problem with the is iPhone. the party. The party could not get the, the dancing shot once the lights go low, unless you're uh, Russell Preston Brown and running around with your pro photo. Well, yeah, with his with his uh, with his uh, with his big lights, uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. We've got a few more pictures here that I'd like to show off. Uh, sure. Okay, this is classic. Okay, so Rick is taking pictures of leopards, tigers, lions. Uh, with I believe this is on the Samsung, right? No, actually, this is uh, I did. I have a, a di I have different pictures uh, of a different leopard with the S twenty three, but this is taken with the iPhone. Look mm -hmm. at the whiskers. If even if someone looking at this on a big screen can see how sharp this is. Now, the key to this picture was not the iPhone. It was not me. It was the guide. The guide, first of all, found the leopard, and then he got us really close to the leopard. Leopard ran out of the tree, went to do something, and then came back. Was coming up. And we were like right at the base of the tree. So having a good guide is amazing. It was late afternoon. The light was in the right place. There were no branches like all around. People don't believe me that this was taken with with the uh, with the iPhone uh, 14 Pro. And in my Kelby One class during the summit, I actually you know you could swipe up with the iPhone and see all see all the information you know for the picture. I have the all the information that goes along with this. So this is definitely, I know it's hard to believe that this okay. picture was taken with an iPhone. <laughs> right. And had I been there first mode, yeah. I would have taken hundreds of shots. Did you only take a, hit, a handful? Well, when I say that my, my one picture promise, I, if that's the picture I'm going for, I'm going to put it on the uh, burst mode. Yeah. Yeah. Burst mode, you can get 30 to 60 shots just like I that. I know. Yeah. yeah, and they're sharper than when you shoot on live, as you know. A lot of people think I'll just shoot on live, and uh, you know I could you know swipe and back and pick 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 the best shot. But the pictures on the burst mode are higher resolution. So if you're going for action, I think that's the way to go. Um, if you don't know about burst mode, if you do the volume up, volume up yeah. on on the yeah. on the side of the camera, that'll give you burst mode. Or if you gently swipe. Uh, to the left, I believe it is. Let's. Uh, look. yeah, it's it's to the, it's to the left, right? Uh, yep. In real time, but 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 carefully, because if you hold your finger down, you will actually start recording video. Uh, yeah. Okay. Another. This is portrait mode in Cuba. Correct. Actually, it's portrait mode. Actually, I took this the same day I took the leopard. This is in uh, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And look at look again. What we said the mood matters most, right? So yes, it's in the portrait mode. Yes, the background was distracting. Yes, I was able to get rid of the distracting background with all the branches and, and the trees and the bright lights, you know, shining through the leaves in the portrait mode. But it's the mood, it's the feeling. Like I didn't look like a pro, so I just looked like a regular guy. And I was able to again. I mentioned that connection before. I was able to establish a connection <laughs> with this woman, and I like the cash light in her eyes. Now, one thing with the portrait mode, as you know, is that the edges look a little soft. So if you're in a studio, the edges are going to be really sharp with the black background. But uh, as Yo-Yo Ma says, expression is more important than perfection, and I think that's something, Jefferson, that we really need to embrace and think about when we're shooting with the iPhone. Maybe it's not perfect, you know, in a situation like this, if you want sharper edges, but this is, this picture brings me joy to see again, you know, to see how happy this woman was, this young girl was when I, during this photo session, she was having as much fun as, as you can see, I, I said, the camera looks both ways. You can see I would, how I was feeling when I took this picture. Well, and the great thing is, you know, your way around Photoshop. So if you wanted to, you could yeah. take that picture, put it into Photoshop, press right. select subject, yank it out, right. put it against the black background. It might be a little sharper for the edges, right? Uh, definitely, definitely. And the other Good thing point. that's really cool about portrait mode is I don't know how you did it. I don't know if you adjusted it on, on the spot, but you could have added all that stuff afterwards. You know, yes. you could never do that in the old days on any of your big cameras. It never did, nothing like that existed. But you take the picture in portrait mode and yeah. then afterwards apply the effect. Yeah, I know. 
this is why I'm saying, I think before we came on, or maybe I said it when we did come on, I'm so inspired, re-inspired that this tool, you know, is just this, it's so powerful. It's a film camera. It's a still camera. You know, it's, it's a, it's a video camera. It's a fun camera. It's your processor. And I think the other thing that, that is cool, like it, it, you get the instant gratification and you could see because it's a big screen, right? I don't yeah. have to look at a little mirrorless screen. I could just, the, Susan has a, a brightness not turned up all the way. I always have it turned up all the way because I want to, well, I wear sunglasses outside, outside too. But I am definitely inspired, uh, re-inspired uh, to shoot with this phone and, and the S23 for, I, I did some wildlife shots in, uh, in Tanzania and Antarctica with the S23 when I had to get closer. Okay, Sanu wants to know if you added the stage lighting before you took the picture or after. That that one was taken with it. In other words, as soon as I, I had it set up with the stage lighting, you know, the, that dramatic black background when I took the picture because I wanted to show her and all all the people, you know, in that tribe, all the Maasai people, was, what, where was that? You know, they couldn't believe, like, the, the background was, like, you know, gone. Did you ever miss your Sony in Cuba? Or in no. Morocco, never? No, and not in Antarctica, no. Because uh, I was able to get close to the animals. Up in Alaska where I'm going in March, you know, I definitely uh, would miss it <laughs> because I, I want to get, you know, really full-frame shots of the bald eagles flying, you know, at 40, 50 miles an hour. Uh, and I wouldn't be getting those with the – with. The, I might get them. But um, so when, I was in, when I was in Paris, I just missed – putting my finger down on a shutter. I just, it's a thing that I've been yeah. doing for all these years. I just sort of miss that and the feel of a camera. But the flip side was I left the hotel room every morning at nine yeah. o'clock. And I didn't come back until 10 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't dragging all that stuff all day. So yeah. it definitely worked, worked out. Um, we've, we've come to, uh, it's, it's time to say goodbye. Oh, no. uh, if you'd like to hear more from Rick and myself, please sign up for the Kelby One Live iPhone photo conference, right? Yep. Yeah, it's in, uh, it's in February 28th and 29th. It's, it's going to be on leap year day, right? The 28th yeah, that's and 29th. Cool. A lot of great speakers. Meanwhile, Rick has the smartphone photo experience uh, group on Facebook, right? Yep, yep. You have a Slick Pick website now. Yes, it's called. Uh, yeah, it's called uh, Rick and Susan Salmon's iPhone Photo Experience, and uh, we set that up for just iPhone, iPhone, uh, iPhone, or iPhone photos, and it's gotten a lot of good uh, reactions. Slick Pics is amazing. They do uh, they do all the work for you. They you just send them the stuff, and they set it up. If you don't, ha if you haven't checked them out, you know, you Jeffson and you you the uh, listeners and then the viewers definitely check them out. It's it, it looks amazing. Okay. Uh, and they're fun walks, people. They're fun people. Photo Walks TV right here on YouTube. We'll be going to Alcatraz Island in tomorrow's episode. And cool. uh, who knows what else is coming up. I want to thank Rick Salmon, ricksalmon.com, correct? Yep. Yep. Thank you for being here. We're going to be live every Thursday, 12 slash 3. 12 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, leading up to this conference. So I hope everybody will come back. Thank you for watching, Rick. Thanks again. Well, I thank you so much. I hope we could do this again. The time flies when you're having fun. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more. Next time we'll play a song. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye. yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much.